Honey, how are we up? Now, Mr. Speaker, Kuratato Kato Etifari. Not quite. Mr. Speaker, the original submissions to the Royal Commission included a plea for recognition of the Treaty of Waitangi and local government and the recognition of Rangatiratanga, Kaitiakitanga, and the rights and responsibilities of Mana Whenua. Sure, they acknowledged the limitations of arrangements being implemented by councils around the Auckland region, but they recognised at least the possibility of positive relationships in Part 1, Section 4 of the Local Government Act of 2002, which states that in order to recognise and respect the Crown's responsibility to take appropriate account of the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi and to maintain and improve opportunities for Māori to contribute to local government decision-making processes, Parts 2 and 6 provide principles and requirements for local authorities to facilitate participation by Māori in local authority decision-making processes. But this bill, Mr Speaker, will throw out that promise. This bill will close off forever any possible avenue for Māori participation in local government. It will slam the door on a rich resource of strategies and solutions to invest in full participation of Māori and local government in Auckland and deny the possibilities of partnership in favour of privatisation, user pays and the denial of participation by the citizens of Auckland. Mr Speaker, this bill may be about organisation of cost-effective services and the restructuring of re representation, but there can be no argument whatsoever for the denial of basic democracy to a third of the population of this country and the refusal to honour the world's greatest Polynesian city by giving three seats to the people who have been giving land to the settlement of Auckland for more than 200 years. Mr Speaker, while I don't like having to stand alongside the Labour Party that stole our foreshore and seabed, cancelled grants for Māori students, gave back money every single year to the government as if we didn't need it, and refused to sign the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, I recognise an even older maxim which says, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, <coughs> at least for now. <coughs> Mr Speaker, just a few hours ago, I was I was digging in my attack on Labour, saying that if their proposal for Pacific and Asian rep seats on the Auckland Council was genuinely about representation, then where were the seats for the Somali, the Kenyan, the Dalmatian, the South African or the Scotsman? And I said that although I respected much of what Labour had to say, I felt that their Pacific Asian representation proposal was nothing but a naked grab for the votes of the large Pacific and Asian populations in Auckland. And I added that while I had the greatest res of respect for my Pacific cousins, and while I respected the right of Asians to be heard, I could never accept the betrayal by Labour's Māori MPs of the primary right of Māori to be on the Auckland Council as mana whenua, tangata whenua and Māori. Point of order, the Honourable Darren Hughes. Mr Speaker, the member is well aware, because I briefed him on it, that we, the Labor Party put down amendments exactly as, he's to, as he is now saying, and they were ruled out of order. Oh, look, that's, we uh, that's a debating that point. Way. That's not a well, point of order. Well, he knows that's not true. That please, 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 please. Point of order. Point of order. He knows that's can not you, true. Can you tell me, sir, is a member allowed to deliberately mislead the House exactly. after being warned like that? <laughs> well, the member... Thank you. The members should know that we've just had a number of hours on debates and what has actually been uh, voted on and passed. So I'd ask the member just to take consideration of comments that he's making. The Honourable Harawit. Point of order, Mr. Yep. Uh, the Honourable Rodney Hyde. Mr. Speaker, it's not for you That's right. to tell a member That's right. what he may or may not say in a third reading speech. It's also not for someone who's feeling sensitive to stand up and accuse a member of deliberately misleading the House and to have your support in that. Actually, no. what you should be telling <coughs> Mr Mallard is no. he can't make thank that you. accusation and accusation. Thank, thank you for that. Look, of order. Thank you. Look, um, we're ending the end of a debate and, um, as I mentioned to the member, um, just, just you, once again, we can't say that a member's lying. Uh, because they are debating points, and we know that very well. <coughs> well, I'm on my feet. You can't say that someone's lying. So let's continue, and I'll ask Connie Wera to com uh, complete his speech.
You have five minutes. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I said at the time that I was outraged by the position taken by Labour's Māori and Peace in allowing the status of Māori to be downgraded to that of other ethnic groups, for we are and always will be the first people of this great land of Aotearoa. And I called at that time on all those Labour Māori and Peace to speak up for Māori, to fight for Māori and to be Māori. Point of order, the Honourable Parakura Horamia. Mr Chair, this member knows that's not true. No, no, He look, continues <coughs> his I've, litany of mistruths. Thank you. And he knows exactly what he's doing. Thank, thank you. Look, I've already ruled on this, and I'll ask the member to continue. These are debating points. Hon Honourable <coughs> Honey Harawera. To fight for those seats on the Auckland City Council for Mana Whenua first, for Māori second, and for anybody else after that. Or to admit their failings, to recognise their duplicity, to confess their complicity, and to resign their seats forthwith. And I said that their mana, for what it was worth, the mana of their people, and indeed the mana of their tūpuna, deserved nothing less. But tonight, Mr. Speaker, but tonight, Mr. Speaker, for all my criticism, for all my criticism of the Labour Party, for the watering down of the stand on Māori representation. Let me say that I am grateful for the sterling efforts of those from the Labour Party and the Green Party for helping to highlight the naked and rapacious grab for power by those who would seek to commercialise the services that people in places like South Auckland have taken for granted, like free libraries and free swimming pools, and turn them into user-paced environments that will deny tens of thousands of Māori and Pacific people access to educational and recreational services and further consign them to an underclass that grows daily as we speak, as we plunge deeper and deeper into the greatest recession any of us have ever known. And I am grateful to those in Labour and the Greens. Point of order, the Honourable David Cunliffe. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, in no way do I take offence uh, to the member, uh, uh, even though he's not in fact representing our position correctly, but I do seek the leave of the House, sir, to table a press statement by my colleague Parakura Horamir, clearly setting out <coughs> the fact that Labour's policy is to no, that's not a, that's, these three are debating points. seats on these the These are not council. points of order, they are debating points. Uh, leave has been sought to table this, uh, what document press is releases. it? What, what is the document? Press, uh, Mr Speaker. A press uh, release? I leave, uh, to table a press release by our Murray First spokesman. Leave has sought to Mr. table a press release. Mr, mm. Mr. Speaker. No, you... no, I'm dealing with something. I'm speaking to the point of order? No, I'm dealing with a point of order. Leave has been sought to table a document. Is there an objection to that course of action? There is objection. Point of order. Point, point of order, Mr Speaker. Can I have clarification? Order. Up. Point of order. Might the I honourable. have clarification from the clerk as to how much time I actually have left? Please. You have exactly four minutes. Thank you. And I'm grateful, and I'm grateful to those in Labour and the Greens for standing alongside the Māori Party in challenging the insidious proposal to deny every Aucklander the right to equitably participate in the wider council elections by ensuring that only those with the resources, the profile, the money and the capacity to pay for a million dollar campaign need even contemplate applying. Once again concerning the powerless, the dispossessed and the under-resourced to respond in the time-honoured fashion of rejection of a leadership that bears no relationship whatsoever to their own lives of struggle and to react in ways that none of us really want to see. And I, and I remind all those in national to beware of bills which will still be alive when the next elections come around. For just like the Electoral Finance Act came back to haunt the Labour government right through the election campaign and eventually materialised to bite them on the backside in the election of 2008, so too, so too will the Waterview Criminal Bypass Bill and this Auckland Denial of Democracy Bill still be open and festering sores in the run-up to the election campaign of 2011, for which National will be rightfully blamed and held accountable. <laughs> Mr Speaker, in less than 10 days' time, Māori people from all over Auckland will be marching for the right of Māori representation. Mana whenua and taurahere, Māori from their many tribal homelands outside of Tāmaki Makaurau. And I have no doubt that there will be people of many other races, Asian, Somali, Dalmatian, Kenyan, Scottish, South African, 
And I sincerely hope and pray that we will also be joined by our cousins of the Pacific, the people I call the children of Maui, because we are all related through a common history, a common heritage, and a common love for the waters of the Pacific that are our backyard. And in the same way that I welcome those from the Labour Party who have been speaking boldly and positively about a hikoi that they came to late in the day and now speak of in passionate terms of ownership. Let me remind them that this will not be a march for the Labour Party in the same way that it's not a march for the Greens or the Māori Party. For while it has been the Māori Party that has championed the kaupapa of Māori seats at the table and the debates within this House, we have also acknowledged from day one that our role is to support the efforts, the plans, the hopes and the dreams of the Tangata Whenua, of Tamaki Makoto, for genuine recognition of all that they are, all that they have given and all that they desire for their children in the beautiful city of Auckland. And we will march for the rights of those whose land we gave our freedom for, and we will march on the 25th of May 2009, not for our political parties, not for union beliefs, not for our ethnic differences, but because we truly believe in the Treaty of Waitangi and the principle of partnership which challenge us all to accept that Māori are not just another ethnic group, that Māori are not just another minority, that Māori are not simply citizens of Aotearoa, but that in fact Māori are tangata whenua, people of the land, that Māori are the First Nation people of this land, that the many hapu of Ngāti Whātu and Tainui have given lands for the development of Auckland, often to the detriment of their own future. And if I can just politely remind the House that when 31 years ago the state moved in and arrested the children of Ngāti Whātua on the last remaining land that they could rightfully call their own, who on earth would have thought that in a wash-up Ngāti Whātua would choose not recrimination, accusation and blame, but actually invite the Auckland City Council itself to share the management of Takaparafa, which remains to this day a jewel in the crown in the city of Auckland. I'm sorry, the member's time has expired. Yeah. Oh, no.